I've played video games uh, for my entire life, and I think that they're tremendously important because they're a form of human play. Whether you're playing alone, with your children, with your family, or with your friends, they have the potential of unlocking amazing experiences, um, almost always for the positive and sometimes for the negative. I'm a native New Yorker, and I trained uh, initially as a, as a psychotherapist, and then in later life, uh, found an interest in studying human motivation, human behavior, and large-scale data. And I'm quite keenly interested now in studying how online environments like video games and social media uh, both shape our mental health and how our own behaviors uh, wind up shaping uh, the types of things that we experience. The, the claims that are made about technology are, are very broad, but it's an area that's not studied particularly well. When we talk about technology, whether it's the new social media platform or video game, people have overblown claims, overblown fears, sometimes overblown hopes about how this technology might impact human thriving and human health. But the actual quality of the research is quite low. No one shares their data. No one shares their code. Nobody actually presents the type of evidence that should be convincing for broad claims and changes to health and policy. And so one of the reasons why I and my colleagues spend our entire lives kind of investigating how technology shapes us and how we might shape technology is to bring up the level of evidence, to bring the standard of, of, of data and insights up to the level of the hype so that we can actually figure out how we might make these contexts better, hold tech companies accountable, and improve our health and thriving. A lot of how our team spends our time is trying to unlock new sources of data in order to study the types of things that can only be looked at inside of social media firms and, and large games companies. And so we spend a lot of our time trying to reunite users with their own data, exploring legal mechanisms, uh, research mechanisms and political mechanisms to allow people to donate their data freely. So as you browse Instagram, play World of Warcraft, uh, or engage in, in, in scrolling through TikTok videos, we would very much like to figure out how those behaviors could be donated uh, to people like me and people like those on our team in order to study how moment-to-moment -moment fluctuations in use uh, relate to well-being. It's amazing to be the only psychologist in my department uh, as a member of a larger community of, of lawyers, of philosophers, um, of, of sociologists and other forms of scholarship. So I can ask if I run into a legal problem, you know, the world's leading expert on algorithms. If I don't really know how we know something, I can ask uh, a philosopher. Um, and, and really that's the type of thing that I, I couldn't encounter anywhere else. And it's enriched my scholarship and my advocacy greatly. I believe that my field is undergoing a process of maturing. I think that psychology and large-scale data science is, is moving away in terms of hype and in terms of outsized promises and fears. I think that researchers are becoming more accountable as time goes on to sharing their data, sharing their code. I particularly believe, uh, I have to believe, in the goodness of people who work in these companies. They aren't fundamentally bad people. They want to do the right thing. And I think that building consortiums of scientists, policymakers, and those working inside the industry are possible so that we're able to work together in psychology, in behavioral, behavioral sciences, in large-scale data science, so that we can share time on large-scale platforms the way physicists share time on particle accelerators, so that we can gain in-depth knowledge into who we are and how we are. If I could flip a switch, and change my field. I would try to make it as easy to donate the data of your digital lives to researchers operating in my field as it is now to donate your health records, your tax records, your school records for researchers in those areas. I would like to reunite people and empower people to participate in citizen science on a global scale in ways that protect people ethically and legally against re-identification and exploitation. I think that our data can tell us much more about ourselves than it currently does. I believe it can be used for things other than selling ads. And I think the only way that's possible is if fundamentally laws change and entrenched interests are changed by citizen action. Never before has so much data been held about so many and known to so few.
there is an opportunity now to be part of the leading edge of opening up these sources of data, of gaining insights into ourselves. This is tough. This will require turning down sweetheart deals. This will require democratizing science and working in teams instead of promoting individual brands. The temptation will be there to cut special deals, to kind of uh, influence pedal, to become a thought leader, another, another generation of gurus. And if I had one piece of advice, I'd say go into that open-eyed, decide, do you want to be part of a machine or do you want to stand up to that machine? And how can you best accomplish that? Thank you.